What is going on, Americans? Jericho Green here with you once again. And if it's Sunday for you, it's Friday to me. But this is not just any Sunday. This is Sunday, June 16th, 2019. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to the fathers that are here and the fathers that are not. Happy Father's Day to the fathers doing what they signed up to do. The stork did not drop that baby on your porch. You did that. You're the one who went, <coughs> now you got a baby, or more than one. The little kids, adolescents, adults, whatever you have, Happy Father's Day to all the real fathers out there putting in the work. The hardest job you will ever have. But you are working for a person or people that you, love isn't even the word. I wish the English language had a word deeper than love because that's what it is. I mean, you love your, your family, you love your spouse, you love your friends, but your children, that's a whole nother level. I, I guess since it's the only word we have, I love my children. I love being around my children. When I get off work, that's my main goal. People at work ask me, what are you gonna do after work? Hang out with my kids, go home and wrestle. You know, all that fun during the schoolwork, homework dinner time, going for bike rides, whatever. Just being with my children, being with my family is the greatest thing ever. And when you're a young man, before you have kids, you have no fucking idea. You just don't. I'm not trying to be one of those people like, oh, we're parents, so we're better. No. <clears throat> but when you have children, that changes the game. Top to bottom, inside and out. You're thinking about the long game. You're thinking about what kind of life your kids are going to have. What kind of life are you going to provide for them? I lay in bed sometimes, literally lay in bed at night thinking of the world that my children are inheriting. Thinking of the, the people they're going to run into. The situations they're going to encounter. The bad people in the world. The dangerous people in the world. How can I protect them from that? How can I equip them with the skills to deal with that? Fatherhood changes your life. Fatherhood is nurturing. Fatherhood is protecting. Fatherhood is pressure. If you're not living at the level you want to be at, if you're not living the lifestyle you want to live, providing that lifestyle for your kids, it creates pressure. I need to do something. I need to make a better quality of life for my family. That's part of the reason why I started doing YouTube videos. Part of it was I need to create a new revenue stream, but I don't want to pick up another nine to five. I don't want to pick up a shift somewhere or start a new job. That's because that's more time away from my kids. I owe them as much time as I can. That's all they want. That's all they want is our time, the toys and all that shit. That's nice. But all they want is our time. But fatherhood is the greatest thing on earth. And when you have, I'm fortunate enough to have a boy and a girl, but whatever. Boy, girl, one of each, however it works out. When you have a son, you're teaching your son what kind of man to be. And if you have a daughter, you're teaching your daughter what kind of man to choose. And most of the shit your kids learn from you, they learn it from just looking at you. They're looking at our everyday routines, the way we do things, the way we prepare for the day, the way we interact with people, the way we interact with their mother. Kids need to walk, come around the corner and be grossed out. They need to see mom and dad kissing, hugging, maybe a little playful chasing around the kitchen, maybe squeezing mama's rump. Your kids need to say, I remember being grossed the fuck out when I walk in the kitchen and my mom and dad were kissing. Gross. But they need to see that. They need to see how a relationship is supposed to work. 
kids are so fine-tuned to us. You remember that scene from the first Mission Impossible? I know there's 15 of them now, but the very first one where he breaks into that room to steal the information and the floor is pressure sensitive. Remember, a drop of sweat rolled off his head and hit the floor and set off the alarm. That's what I'm talking about. That's how sensitive your children are to you, to what you do, to your mood. But fatherhood is also the greatest thing in the world. And one thing they don't tell you about fatherhood is 85% of it is being a fucking pack mule. You know how much shit I carry when we go somewhere? Not only do I have the diaper bag, which fortunately, now that my youngest, he's headed on three and a half, so you know, we don't gotta have the diapers and the wipes and the 14 changes of clothes and 18 bottles and 47 bibs. Fortunately, we don't have to do that, but you know, sweatshirt, maybe a, a change of clothes. We're still, we're on the, the latter side of potty training. So, you know, extra pair of pants, maybe extra pair of undies. But we travel relatively light, but I got a backpack full of stuff. Your kids are picking up rocks and flowers and twigs and shit. Remember one time being at work, I reached in my pocket, I said, like, what the fuck is this? I had dried cranberries in my pocket. But those are the kind of moments that make you smile when you think about your kids. And I know parents who have older kids, I know you're on to a different phase and that I realize how quickly these years go by. My daughter's going into second grade. My son is starting preschool in August. Shit is going too fast. I know it sounds cliche as hell, but I wish I could hit pause. I wish I could just freeze them right here. They're the perfect age. They still need me for everything. They still think I know everything. Not so much my daughter, she's trying to, she's waking up to it. Dad don't know everything. But this is awesome. Fatherhood is fucking awesome. But before you have kids, you just, I mean, you, you're, you're, it's, you, that's how it's supposed to be. Of course you're not thinking the way a parent would because you're not a parent. But let me tell you, when it happens and when you get home after you come from the hospital and you close that front door and you realize, shit, there's no button here for the nurses. You can't just walk out of the bedroom and go to the nurse's station. Excuse me, can you bring me this? I had a question about this. Can you take the baby to the nursery so I can get some rest? No, 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 no. That shit's over. But to any new fathers or mothers, new parents, period, bringing that baby home scared as shit. When our, when our, our first was born, her bedroom had the lights where you could dim them. And she would be in there sleep. And I would come in and turn on the light, especially I used to work night, so I get home around midnight or whatever. First thing I do is go in there, turn up the light, just, just enough light so I can see her chest rising and falling. They don't, there's no manual for this shit. But just know, you have that parental DNA inside of you. You just never had to use it, but it's in there. Your skills and your know-how is in there. Don't worry. As long as you feed them, clothe them, and keep them safe, you're doing great. Everything else is gravy. Now, to you rotten, sorry, absentee, piece of shit fathers. You rotten motherfuckers. If you're split up with your baby mama and you live far away or you don't live even worse you live close and you're not taking care of your kids let me tell you something tuck your fucking tail kiss that woman's ass and get back in your kids life now I know there's some situation where the woman is fucking impossible but guess what maybe you shouldn't have inside of that one you fucked up. You picked some crazy bitch to have a kid with. Now you got to deal with it. Whatever you have to do, get in that kid's life. Especially if you have a daughter. 
Stop filling up these fucking strip clubs and these street corners with these fucked up women. You made them, you take care of them. You do what you got to do. Get a commuter car, put some miles on it, live close to them, do what you have to do. Because your kid didn't have nothing to do with you picking that crazy bitch to have a kid with. They're here. You owe them your best. And if you're just not there, how the fuck do you go through your life every day with children in the world and you don't take care of them? Look close. Look, look right here. You're a fucking piece of shit. Get in your kid's life, take care of them, or kill yourself. It's that serious. Do your fucking job, take care of your children, or end your life. Now to you sorry motherfuckers who are in your kid's life, but you're an abusive piece of shit, you fucking tear down their self-esteem at every turn, you're a fucking monster, change your life, change your attitude. You know why? Because you're putting damaged, crazy motherfuckers in the world for my kids to deal with. You're creating serial killers and wild fucking animals for my children to deal with. If you don't like your kids, you shouldn't have fucking made them. That's your fault. They don't deserve that shit. Fix it, you fucking idiot. How do you create children and then you're not in their life? What are you doing all day? What are you thinking about? What occupies your time and your mind if you're not focused on your children? Oh, but Jericho, this happened. I'm not talking about these fucking baby-sized handful of special circumstances. We all know that's not the norm. We all know that. If you're a young man and you got a woman, don't get her pregnant until you get married. Wear some rubbers, have her swallow a handful of birth control pills before, I don't know what to tell you. Don't have kids until you're married. Don't have kids too young. This is not 1945. Get married before you have children. It creates security for them. It creates a foundation for them. It shows commitment. It shows your children, I am committed to your mother. We have linked our lives together. I will be with her forever. Don't worry. Shit happens. People cheat. I'm not talking about that. That's not what I mean. You know what the fuck I mean. Don't get married, don't have babies until you get married. And if you create a life, be in that kid's life. You owe them that. You owe them your best. Period. They didn't ask to fucking be here. They didn't hold their hand up. Ooh, 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 I, I want that family. No, you created them. So fucking take care of them. And fathers are supposed to be the disciplinarian. I'm not saying mothers don't and aren't. My mom was. But that's part of our role, to be the disciplinarian. When I see a father out in public, a little weak-ass, soft-spoken, hey, guys, don't do... What the fuck are you doing? Your kids are running around here like Lord of the Flies, and you ain't doing shit. And one time I'm at work, and this dude comes in with his daughter and a couple of her friends. They couldn't have been more than 10. And his daughter had this shirt on that, it wasn't even a whole shirt. It showed her entire stomach and back. And she's with her father. Girl, you don't have a stomach until you're 30. Not only would I not allow my daughter to even purchase some shit like that. And if somebody gave her that as a gift, we need to talk. You have a gift return to make. I hope you kept the receipt. Because there's no fucking way I'm going to have my daughter dressing like that. Not only would she even own it, if she somehow did sneak it into the house. You, are, you ain't wearing it with me on public. What the hell is wrong with you? 
You better hide that shit in fear. But this fool was out with his 10 year old dressed like that. We can't do that. You can't just be on autopilot, sleep at the fucking wheel. Fatherhood is serious. Fatherhood is real. Fatherhood shapes lives. So shout out to all the dads doing that. There's a lot of pressure to being a father. I'm not complaining. I know what I signed up for. When you're out in public with your family, if you're walking down the street, you always put your kids on the inside in case, you know, some car hops the curb. You're some shady looking motherfucker walking towards you. You're, pl you're playing out the scenario of what you're going to do in case this dude does something stupid. That's real shit. Always watching out, making sure everything's safe, looking at your surroundings. When we go out to eat, I never sit with my back to the door. Parano you call paranoia, you call whatever the fuck you want. But I take my job as a father very seriously. That's the least I could do. But dads truly are superheroes in the eyes of their children. Last night, I put my son to bed and he has the Avengers bed sheets. And on one side of his pillowcase is Hulk and Groot, and the other side is Captain America and Spider-Man. And he couldn't figure out which side of the pillow he wanted to sleep on. And I gave him a hug and put him in bed, and he hugged me, and he was like, uh, he's all, Daddy, I love you so much. And I was like, oh, mm, love you too, son. <clears throat> oh, ceiling's leaking in here. <clears throat> You know, moments like that, it's, you can't even put it into words. It's beautiful. So I have reached my destination in this rat race. Again, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there handling your business. To you pieces of shit who are not, fix it or kill yourself. Now let me wrap up this work week, but you know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, utilize the PayPal link and the Teespring link where I do have gear for 4th of July. Get your patriotism on via your green gear. I am Jericho Green. Man, I'm out.